Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. In this episode, while we wait for our newly established passenger loop to get settled in and start making money, we're going to focus on providing those stations with as much support as possible. So as we're sort of relying on this loop as our main money maker from here on, we're going to need to make sure that we have the infrastructure set up for it. If we take a look at some of these trains, their capacity is upwards of 160. And that's quite a bit. And for these larger cities, we have almost no problem filling them up. However, with these smaller cities, such as Huntsville, Louisville, Knoxville, and even Brownsville, we don't quite fill up the trains when they leave. As we might see here, this train will probably leave about maybe half full, which it's little things like this that's going to end up losing us money on this line. So we need to figure out better, faster ways to get these passengers up to these train stations. Buses can only do so much, unfortunately, as right now we don't really have huge capacities and if we just add more vehicles, they end up getting stacked up at the uh, bus station. So one way that we can think about getting sort of higher traffic of passengers moving around is to use trams as they carry probably about twice as much as buses and they can pretty much do just about the same thing where I'll just move people around the city. So I think we'll start in Brownsville, and Brownsville will sort of be our case study to see how we can get this working. I haven't really worked with trams at all, so this will be a learning experience for me too while setting this up. But I think Brownsville is a well enough city where if we mess it up, it won't be too detrimental and we'll be able to fix it pretty easily without disrupting the entire ecosystem of the entire map. So thinking about tram tracks and sort of how we want it to go throughout the city, we'll kind of want a pretty simple loop running through here. So I think we got a nice loop set up right here and all we have to do is go through and upgrade each one of these streets with tram tracks. So we'll just go around, get every single one of these that we want, and then we can start placing down the stations for them. Alright, so we can see we have our little loop of tram track, and of course we'll need a tram depot. We'll throw this in right around here so it connects up to the existing track. And now we can pretty much come in and place down our bus slash tram stops. So we'll place one. Actually, let's delete this one and move it over just a little bit so that this one will still count as the bus stop that was there before, but we can also use it for the tram. And then we can place down another stop somewhere around here-ish. Actually, I think Let's do something similar since this bus stop is here. 
let's see if we can get it to move here, which it did. So that's what we want. And then down here we can have another tram stop. And then the one here automatically updated to one. So that's good. And then here, I think, let's see how many people are here. Yeah, so for this, I think we could probably, let's delete this, add in a road connection going straight across here. We'll upgrade it to have tram tracks and then we'll place down a new uh, station here so it can connect right up to our loop again. So we'll get that in right about here and that should already pop in with the old one that was there. And I don't know if we have to do anything else or if the tram tracks will automatically go there. Maybe we have to uh, update this road. Yeah, so this now has tracks for tram access and that's pretty much what we want. And I think our loop is pretty much set. So now we can come over to our tram depot and we can pick one of these newer trams that we've unlocked. As you can see, they all have pretty decent capacity compared to what was there before for the buses. I think we uh, will go with some of these LM68 trams. Let's go with five for now. I don't exactly know how much the sort of ratio we need for trams is, but then we'll just have it follow the loop around in a way that makes sense. And just like that, I believe the loop is set. So here we can see him coming out and hopefully they should start picking up some passengers. So trams I think are gonna be pretty important for us in some of our larger cities where we definitely need more capacity um, for passenger transport. And another thing to uh, take note here is that these don't stop at every intersection. Whereas cars might stop or have to wait at an intersection, I don't believe trams have to do the same thing. They might under special circumstances, but I'm not too sure. So as long as they don't get held up by normal car traffic, they should operate pretty, pretty well. I'd say. So now we have the tram network set up here. I think we can maybe try it on a city slightly larger and see what we can get out of it there. All right, so let's take a look at probably one of our biggest cities at the moment, Clearwater. We're starting to run into tons of traffic issues and all of our buses and everything are just stuck in traffic at the moment. So what we're going to want to do is first of all, we're going to need to go through and upgrade some of these roads so that they have increased capacity and just make sure that we have some of the uh, larger roads to help provide the infrastructure 
needed in clear water. So, such as this sort of central vertical road here. This road should definitely be upgraded for traffic moving up and down the city. Obviously, we have some areas that aren't going to really work out as some weird intersections show up, but we should just be able to fix it like that. And here we have some weird things going on. This might be a problem as it's sort of squeezed in between these two stations and we don't really want to move any of these as that'll cause a bunch of issues. So let's pause real quick here. See if we can move. We can't move this one over because this truck station will get in the way. So we can come in here, delete that, replace the cargo building there, and get rid of that too and plop that down. Oh, those are the wrong buildings. So we can get in these buildings. And now we should be able to delete that, replace it with a new one that should give a little bit more space along this road. And I think we'll want this as close to the cargo station as possible, just so we don't get any weird issues going on there with those small intersections. And the last thing we need to do is figure out how we're gonna get this in here. We might be able to configure this station where we can delete this building on the end here. And I'm not too sure what that building was. I think it might have just been a, one of these cargo buildings. But let's see if we can get some more in over here. So yeah, we can fit a couple of these uh, small buildings in along here, and then I'll just uh, make it so that we have space to upgrade this road. And I don't think that should really cause any issues with our cargo distribution as it still can reach this truck station. So now we should be able to upgrade this road. And now we have sort of our main road going up and down the city as a four lane road. We will want to upgrade this road here as this is an outside connection and make sure that connects up here so we don't squeeze traffic anywhere. Now I think the last road we want to upgrade is this one here as this also leads to an outside connection and as we can see it's definitely getting used by a lot of vehicles at the moment. So now hopefully that f will start to fix a lot of this traffic. We might need to move this uh, cargo truck stop somewhere else as it seems to be causing some issues here of traffic not being able to go through. But let's, we'll leave that go for now, see if it clears up at all and we can start to get ready for some trams in in the city. So the way I think we're going to do this uh, tram track in clear water is our main road really for uh, passenger traffic is running this way. So I think we might just have one line 
going straight up this road. It'll do like a little loop at the top, come back down, have like a tiny loop down here. And I think that's just where the tram will be. And so if people want to get off at this bus stop and then take the tram down here or just stay on the buses, they can. But hopefully this tram line that we put in will ease a lot of the passenger traffic we have running through this city. So let's get to adding tram tracks to all these roads. And we just want to make sure we go all the way up getting every single one of these tiny sections of road. And then all the way up here at the top we're going to come over, hit this stop here, come down this road, and then back down this main street to connect up at this intersection. So now we can see our loop that will run up and down Clearwater. We just need to add some stops on it now. So sort of, we want to make sure that we get stops running in both directions as this will be going up and down one street. So I think having a set of stops here and then they can come into the stop here and that'll be fine. Then the next one we'll put up here. And then we'll get one more all the way up here before it loops around to go back south. So now we need to find a spot for a tram depot, which we can get one to fit pretty nicely right down here by the train station. We can line it up just like that. And we can get some more trams on here. So I think we're going to use these BE46 Mirage trams just because they're a little shorter. Well, they're about half as short. And also I want to get experience using different trams or to see what their differences are since I don't know much about them. So running different cars in different cities will be able to see what's working, what's not, and which ones are really more efficient than others. So for this line, I think maybe seven trams will be good. And we'll get them on a new line. Coming up here into this station. Up here more, and then loop around. We just want to make sure that we're hitting the right stop at each one of these. And we'll have it come in to here again, back out, hit that one, and everything looks good. I'm just going to go through and make sure we got them on the right stops, but other than that, we should be good to go. All right, so our trams are starting to uh, circulate throughout Clearwater, and we should begin to see the benefits of this pretty soon. As we can see, the trams do get held up in traffic, but again, when there's no traffic, they should be doing pretty well getting through the city. One thing I am going to add is bus lanes on this main street. As it doesn't seem like there's that much traffic and getting our buses and trams off of this main road where it won't block everyone's path will definitely be good in the long run. So there we go. Hopefully we'll begin to see all of that clear up. 
and it looks like the traffic over here has started to disappear. So that's great to see. We're not going to have all of our trucks getting held up and blocked by all of this. Although something definitely needs fixed here. Maybe we could upgrade this to a two uh, four lane road just to get one or two more cars into there. So coming back up to Brownsville, one thing we want to do is make sure that our bus and tram lines aren't competing with each other too much. As we can see, four of the six stops on our bus line match up with our tram line. So we're going to need to get rid of one or two of these just so that there's some variety on the people that use it and the transfers that they'll need to use to go from place to place. So I think we're going to get for the bus line. I think we're going to get rid of uh, this connection here on Woodland Street just so we can clear up that stop more and it'll help us begin to push people to using the tram line more. Although it does look like all those passengers just sort of left, but now they're all waiting to get the tram as I assume they're waiting to get to the train station up here. So now hopefully that'll mean that these buses won't be competing against our trams at least a little bit more so they both can end up making a profit for us. And speaking of profits, we can see some of the trams on our tram loop in Brownsville are making money. It's not much right now, but as you can see between each stop they're not really carrying too many people yet, but as the city continues to grow and connections get bigger, we'll start to see more full, full trams like this one here. And down here in Clearwater, we can see that we definitely have a lot of people waiting for the tram line here. Almost every stop has a good amount of people waiting, so the trams here will definitely be more effective than the buses that we had previously. Okay, and looking in clear water at our trams, we can see these ones are also making us money. I think we might get two more trams on this line, just because we can see there's not really any waiting down here. They're all sort of up and around these areas. And I think I might also get some, uh, bus lanes in on this road here. I know we just upgraded to a four lane road to help with traffic, but it seems like they're all using one lane anyway, so we'll give them a bus, a bus lane so that it doesn't affect the uh, buses and trams we have running through here. All right, and I think that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode. We got some trams running up in two of our cities now, and we'll see the effects that that has on our larger passenger loop. Hopefully next episode we'll check in on it and see if it's making us money or not, and how it's affecting passenger travel. But that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any feedback or suggestions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.